we actually just put up for sale yesterday. So um, it's been getting some good attention. I mean, we've been kind of teasing it for the last week or so. Jimmy Slash did a video. Um, you got one. The guys at Cold Steel got one. And uh, we're hoping we get a good response on it. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hey, Knife Junkies, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco from the KnifeJunkie.com. Welcome to the show. Welcome to kind of a throwback episode, Bob, if we're going to call it that. We've been doing a lot of interviews, but we're going to kind of get back to the roots of how the podcast started with you and I chatting a little bit, and we're going to do a timely topic. It's the first quarter, ending of the first quarter of the month, January, February, March. So we thought we'd kind of look at uh, some of the knives that you got and did reviews on and give you a chance to talk about some of those knives here in the first quarter of 2019. Yeah, we'll call this our first quarterly roundup of knife purchases Ooh. so I don't get too far behind. I like that. Well, as as the na- as the moniker junkie uh, might imply, I've been on a tear lately, yeah. so... <laughs> Got to keep up with the uh, the inventory for reviews and stuff to talk about, right? Yeah, exactly. Got to remain relevant, Jim. That's right. Well, before we dive into that, I do want to remind folks that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial. Just go to audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. And Bob, we've got, uh, what, three, four, five, six, it looks like about seven or eight knives that we want to talk about today. So where do you want to start? Uh, I think I'm going to start with uh, my roots, Cold Steel. That was uh, Cold Steel was the first company that I became a serious fanboy of in the late 80s. Uh, they actually had a bit of a mystical aura. My my buddy Mike, my best friend, introduced me to the Cold Steel Tanto, and he had read some information. This was obviously way pre-internet about this magical knife that came out that the CIA was carrying and all Ooh. sorts of special operators were carrying. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. But it had this unique faceted blade, which looked kind of like a samurai sword. Yes, the Cold Steel Tanto. And uh, he told me about how they hammer it through car doors. And I imagined uh, that was a big part of the CIA uh, agent's job at the time for some reason to hammer, um, to, to have a knife and to carry a knife that could go through a car door. But that led to my, the, the purchase of the Cold Steel Tanto, and I, I never looked back. Well, definitely sounds like a great story, whether it's true or not. But yeah. Hey, go yeah. with it. <laughs> exactly. Well, it sold one knife. I know that that's, for sure. That's right. That's right. Um, so I'm going to start off with a knife that I once had. A cold steel Tanto. This is the folding Recon 1 Tanto, but it was stolen out of my car by some SOB a couple of years ago. Mm. And uh, I guess I was the first SOB because I left my car unlocked. I remember the day I had too much stuff in my hands and I never returned to my car to lock it back up. Mm. And that was the night someone was trolling around trying car doors. And they liberated me of a of a, of a beloved knife. And it was the cold steel Recon 1 folding Tanto in the 4-inch bladed version. Well, I had a great excuse to rebuy one recently, and I'll get to that later. It has to do with Snaggletooth Tactical, but I'll get oh, back to that. Okay. All right. Um, so I just recently purchased the uh, the new version of the uh, Recon 1 uh, full-size Tanto, and uh, man, they have made some serious improvements to this knife since the first one. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Most notably the steel. For a long time, they were running... AUS 8A, a somewhat soft and maligned uh, Japanese uh, budget steel, which never quite uh, jibed with the fact that these are the strongest, sharpest knives in the galaxy, as they mm. as they uh, advertise. And uh, so now, uh, after a brief stint with CTS XHP, I was having oh, a hard time. I saying love that. it when you talk those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Alphanumeric combinations, they they get me excited. After a short period with that steel, they had a problem uh, with supply. Uh, now they're building them with S35VN steel. And uh, instead of painting the steel with some sort of cheesy uh, uh, black spray paint, which is what they used to use, essentially, they now use DLC on uh, these new S35VN blades. And let me tell you, this is confidence in hand. I know that sounds kind of corny, but it's mm-hmm. true. Uh, with my old... Aus 8 Tanto. I remember opening up a bag of cinders. I know probably not the best thing to to use my knife for, but 
I was opening up a bag of cinders from uh, Home Depot, and on the first cut, with that old soft steel, I put a big divot in the blade. Oh, no. Yeah, and it took me some time to work it out, right. and uh, luckily some criminal has that cheesed up blade now. Well, I was going to say, it sounds like he, he or she did mm. you a favor. Exactly. Yeah. I got rid of that, gave me an excuse to get the new one. So when do you want to tease us about what's going on with that a little bit later with the Recon one that you're doing something with? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that oh, at the end because it's okay. going to lead to a little little something else. All right. You got to make me wait. All right. So the I just want to talk about the other uh, real noticeable difference in the new Recon one. The action is amazing. And hmm. I swear now uh, Cold Steel has the best action on a lockback I know of. You can. Wow. Yeah. You can thumb flick it, Jim, without without even using any wrist action. That's a pretty big statement there for you, Bob. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm full of them. And yeah. <laughs> uh, as as you may or may not know, flickable action without the wrist is much easier to achieve with an axis lock or a liner lock or a, or a frame lock. But on a, a back lock, there's this constant pressure on the blade downward that on most knives will, will stop it from being flicked. But these new cold steels are, the action is just amazing. I'm not exactly sure what they've done differently. But uh, I'm smitten. Mm. And uh, so I'm going to be taking this new Cold Steel Recon 1 Tanto and adding a new mod to it. Okay. We'll, we'll leave it at that? Yeah. We'll leave okay. it at that. Okay. A couple of more Cold Steels you want to talk about before we get to some of the, uh, these other knives? I do indeed. Just the 8010 and the 8015. These have been uh, some highlight purchases of the last quarter. Two Andrew Demko custom designs that are now being produced by Cold Steel. Everyone knows about them because there's so much hype. And in my estimation, the hype is worthy. Uh, these are really awesome knives that I've always wanted to get my hands on, uh, but do not have the budget to get the, the custom versions. And according to some online who have both the production versions and the uh, custom versions, the production versions are, are quite uh, high fidelity reproductions of the custom. So... Mm. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Okay. Uh, one highlight being on the AD15, this new Scorpion lock, which, if you'll allow me, also has a great sound and high fidgetability. It's, uh, if there can be a controversial lock, there might be a little bit of controversy around this because endemic to this design is the, is the possibility of getting your fingers pinched. But mm. I say, if you're a knife guy, toughen up a little bit. Right. <laughs> It's a knife. You're maybe going to cut yourself sometimes. Yeah, so so take the pinch instead right. of the cut. All right. Well, uh, speaking of the AD10 and AD, AD15, do want to remind listeners that uh, you did a couple of videos on those, review videos. Uh, you can find those at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And also, don't forget, we did interview uh, Andrew Demko, and you can find that on uh, podcast episode number 20. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash 20, and you can actually hear an interview with Andrew Demko. Very cool guy. Always looking to improve his designs. So I'm going to move away from Cold Steel and talk a little bit about Great Eastern Cutlery. Everybody uh, who listens to the Knife Junkie podcast or watches our videos knows that I am in love with Great Eastern Cutlery and their work in traditional knives and slip joint knives. Would I say number two on your list behind Cold Steel? I would say number one on my slip joint list. How's okay. that? Okay. Okay. Very uh, diplomatic answer. Well, thank you. So the one I want to talk about is the Bull Buster, which is a full size. It's the, the Great Eastern Cutlery number 21. They, they number all their knives. It's the number 21 Bull Buster, which is a full size sod buster, which is a traditional kind of American farmer's knife. It, it does not have a lock on it, but it has a very, very stout action on it. So the pull and, uh, the pull on it is, is, uh, pretty strong and it stays open under a lot of use, uh, which <laughs> which is, of course, what you want out of a folding knife. But this is a worker's knife, so I think they went out of their way to make the pull on this extra strong. Hmm. Uh, I got the version with linen, uh, green linen micarta, which you know I'm a, a big fan of, right. Jim. Right. And uh, this knife, uh, I like it so much, I've added my uh, a, a little leather fob to it, which means uh, it's kind of my way of marking my territory, if you will. It means that's a keeper. Keeper, Thanks. keeper. <laughs> exactly. A keeper keeper until I decide to sell it, which I won't, but That's I right. love it. That's the reason we call it a keeper keeper. <laughs> <laughs> so this one uh, is starting to develop a patina, which I usually like on my high carbon steel blades. But Jim, for some reason, I want this sucker to stay pristine. So I think I might hit it up with a little bit of polish and yeah. get it back to gleaming. 
Give it the spa treatment, as we say. The spa treatment, indeed. And it has the um, it has markings on the blade. It says Bull Buster, and it has a little uh, image of a bull, kind of a raging bull. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a big fan of of the markings on the blades. So I think once I uh, once I hit it with polish, I'll try and remove that. Um, hmm. That's just personal preference. It's also uh, kind of like putting the fob on it. It's right. I, I know that it'll make it harder to sell. Well, that, I was going to ask you that question because that was, was the first thing my mind came to kind of from that, that area that I come from, uh, online selling and reselling and kind of thing. Wouldn't that hurt the resale value if you took the marking stuff off of it? I do think it would, but uh, I've also sharpened it and stropped it and done other things that would also – uh, remove value. It's kind of like I oh. get a knife I like, and before I can uh, reconsider, I eliminate my options. <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> kind of like in life. Truly make it yours, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, Bull Buster, awesome knife, the number 21. Well, next up, I think you're going to talk about something that, that may be new to your collection, a, a brand? Uh, yes, the Best Tech, the Best okay. Tech Kendo. Uh, this is a beautiful... Um, uh, G10 and D2 uh, blade steel Tanto. And uh, I got it. I've, I've always kind of had my eye on it because I like the look of it, but I've never had a best tech mm-hmm. and uh, just kind of shied away a little bit until I saw a um, a great deal on blade forums and I snapped it up for 35 bucks. It's a 50, $55 knife, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was not disappointed. This knife is not only beautiful to look at, it feels great in hand. It's got incredible ball bearing action. And I just love the shape of the Tanto. It's it's a little bit different from the, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound funny, the traditional modern Americanized Tanto. It looks more like a Chris Reeve Knives Tanto. And it's like a full flat ground blade up to the tip, and then you have a little facet up front. And um, I, I love it. Now, here's a bummer, though. I, I dropped it on its tip almost immediately after. Uh, yeah. And, and the, the string of expletives that came out of my mouth Caligula would have blushed. Not appropriate for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But this knife is great, great action. I, I highly recommend it. And I uh, I have a good friend, uh, actually, who's also been on the podcast. Uh, Drew Swift loves Tantos. Every time he comes over, he picks it up, says, hmm, yeah, this knife. Hmm. So I said, you know, you got a birthday coming up. So I think I'll be getting that for him for his birthday. Bob, before you move on, I do want to mention uh, Drew Swift. That was uh, episode number 21 of the Knife Junkie podcast. So, again, just the knifejunkie.com slash 21. And you can hear that interview with former Marine Scout sniper Drew uh, Swift. And that was, a, that was a pretty good one, too. So, uh, next up on your list, you want to talk about uh, what? CRKT. Someone, uh, a company that has awesome designs, but uh, usually just kind of uses uh, mediocre materials to, to uh, instantiate them. Uh, this one is, however, Ruger branded. And as we all know, firearm branded knives are usually terrible. I'll just say it. But this Ruger slash CRKT LCK is an amazing, amazing knife. I got the Warncliffe version of it. And to my surprise, this has been the greatest cardboard slicer and i'm talking thick double walled cardboard hmm. in in my recent collection in in recent knives i've gotten we've gone through sort of a revolution in the house here new beds for the girls yes ikea um new furniture lots and lots and lots of cardboard to cut up and uh hands down my favorite for cutting cardboard is now this ruger lck warncliffe blade it's amazing it's got a nice hollow grind and it is strong. I mean, I'll, I'll work it through a whole bunch of steel. I mean, not steel, a whole bunch of cardboard and get zero wiggle. And I don't know. I'm just very impressed. So this has turned into a, uh, this is going to sound demeaning, but it's not a kitchen junk drawer knife because it's closest to the area where I cut cardboard and I always know where it is. I'll be able to grab it. And this is a dedicated cardboard knife now. The sucker is great. Great product endorsement there. <laughs> and, and and if it makes the, as you call it, the knife junk drawer, yeah, that's that's a daily user kind of thing right there. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, it's it's uh, 8CR13 MOV, which is uh, softer steel, but it held up great. And if sh- if my wife opens something up uh, and I need to, and it gets a nick, I can, I can take that nick out quickly because of the steel. All right. We're on the Knife Junkie podcast, and Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, is kind of doing a first quarter 2019 uh, review, if you will, of some of the knives that he added to his collection and just kind of uh, recapping thoughts and those kind of things. And so far, we've talked about three cold steel knives, the Recon 1, the 8010, the 8015. 
the GEC number 21 Bowl Buster, the Best Tech Kendo. Just kind of finished up talking about Columbia River Knife and Tool LCK Knife. And, uh, Bob, we've got two more on your list, I think. So what's up next? Indeed. Uh, the next one is the, okay, get ready. Michael Gavick designed, that's Gavco Knives, We Knife produced, mass dropped, distributed Thresher. Yes, named after the Thresher Shark. Uh, this knife is a thing of beauty. Uh, Michael Gavick, Gavco Knives, I've been watching him first on YouTube, now on Instagram for years. I love his designs. They're, they're beautiful. They're oftentimes uh, named after sharks. And I was so excited to see Mass Drop and Wee Knife, who makes a great knife, creating an affordable version of a Gavco knife. So I snapped it up when it came out. <laughs> that was kind of a pun, like a shark. That was sort of a pun, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a beautiful knife. I got one with in, in this teal color with the plain handle slabs and it's got a full flat ground blade, very thin, very slicey, very pokey stabby also. And, uh, I'm very happy with the knife. I, it is kind of on the short end for me. Um, uh, I do not have very large hands, but it, it kind of feels slightly crowded. Uh, how, how long, how long is it? Well, the blade is three and a half inches, which is the, the low end of the scale for me. I like a four inch or, or a three, seven, uh, three point seven five inch blade. Mm. But, but this thing is so beautiful. I'm going to hold on to it for a while. I just, uh, did a review video of it. You may have seen. And, um, I, I'm really liking how it's, how the, uh, the anodization is starting to wear mm. on it. So it, this is kind of a, a, a piece I'm keeping around for its, uh, artistic value. I got to be mm. honest. No, okay. it is extremely capable. Just don't right. drop it on its tip. That's right. Well, that uh, video you mentioned uh, just came out uh, this prior week, and you can find it at the knifejunkie.com slash YouTube uh, for that video knife review. One or one or two more? I can't keep up here. Yeah, well, I have one last knife that I've gotten, uh, and I got it this past week, and I am a huge Topps Knives fixed blade fan. I have uh, hmm. a small collection of, I'd say, seven or eight Topps Knives, and uh they are known for their tactical and outdoors knife knives, and this year they came out with a a uh, small, slender, uh, little tactical knife called the Rapid Strike. I like the name Rapid yeah, Strike. I like that too. <laughs> and you can get it in single or double edged. Of course, I had to get it in double edged, and uh, it is a fantastic little knife. It carries very well for a fixed blade. I have a uh, I put an in the waistband strap on it, and. Uh, it's got jimping all the way around the handle, but it uh, doesn't sit proud of the handle. So if you really bear down, you can you can make use of that jimping. But mm. if you don't, it's not an annoyance to your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, at the tip, at the uh, pommel, it's got a uh, a glass breaker, sort of a little pyramidal uh, uh, termination to the to the tang at the end of the handle, and uh, it's great for breaking glass. I've tried it on a bottle, and it works. <laughs> the only thing is, is when I'm in reverse grip, I like to cap the handle with my thumb and it's a little sharp, but I'm getting used to it. Hmm. The, the blade is slender and beautiful and, and came super sharp. And I would put this, uh, not in terms of quality, but in terms of size and shape. It's kind of like a cold steel spike neck knife. It's got the hmm. long four inch blade and, uh, but it's very slender and right. easy to tuck away. Well, the glass breaker and some of those other features, isn't that kind of uh, endemic of the, the Tomps brand? Aren't they kind of tactical related? Yes. Yes, sir. They are tactical and law enforcement and, and you know, first responder oriented. And in the past five years, they've gotten heavily into the outdoors thing, too. So mm. uh, camp knives and that kind of thing. Trail okay. knives. Uh, mm. and, and before we move on and before I introduce this product, uh, this other product that I'm going to oh, add yes. to my recon one. I just wanted to mention uh, my buddy Ian Lewis, uh, who we spoke to on uh, the Knife Junkie podcast number eight, right. uh, martial arts expert, loaned me. Well, he asked me to fix something on it, and th that was easy to do. So it was basically a loan. It's just taking a long time to fix, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It, and and I think uh, they say possession is nine tenths of the law. So I, I think this might be mine at this point. Right. Again. Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> he loaned me his Bastinelli knives red folder. That's R-E-D, standing for Raptor Extremely Dangerous. And we'll excuse uh, Bastian Coves, who designed this for the for the name. He is not a, a, a native English speaker. So Raptor Extremely Dangerous, the red folder, is an amazing knife. Melts into your hands. It would be uh, an amazing tactical knife, also an amazing EDC blade. It's got an incredible, 
a uh, high flat grind. I think I'm going to do a little video on it before I return it to him. Uh, but it inspired me to seek out a used version uh, of the Bastinelli knives Dragotac, which like this uh, red folder is made by Lion Steel, an Italian company. So it's mm. fantastic fit and finish design and uh, everything else. So I'm very excited about that. You'll hear about that knife when it comes. Well, again, uh, some of the, the names we've dropped have been uh, guests on the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, Ian Lewis, uh, Bob just mentioned, uh, thenifejunkie.com slash eight. You can also find uh, Rob Penna, uh, Snaggletooth Tactical at thenifejunkie.com slash 16. Andrew Dumko, thenifejunkie.com slash 20. And Drew Swift, thenifejunkie.com slash 21. Bob, before we get to that uh, big announcement that you wanted to do, just kind of uh, recap the uh, quickly the knives that you uh, talked about here, the, the first quarter standouts for you. Okay. The new version of the Cold Steel Recon 1, new to me, new in the last couple of years, and the brand new 8010 and 8015, the Andrew Demko Custom Knives, now produced by Cold Steel. The Great Eastern Cutlery Number 21, Large Sod Buster, amazing knife. Best Tech, new company to me and a pretty new company on the scene, the Kendo. The CRKT made uh, Ruger LCK knife uh, with the Warncliffe blade. The Mass Drop Gavco Thresher. And the Topps Knives Rapid Strike. All all good knives. Okay. But if you had to pick one. You son of a gun. I uh, know. Uh, you weren't ready for that. I but wasn't. I, but, I, but I wanted to get you. This is going to sound crazy. But for all around her, I might have to say the Recon One. Hmm. Okay. But a ask me in two minutes, and my answer might be different. Because that's going to lead to what we're talking about next. We have a special guest uh, that you may remember, and we've already talked about him, Rob Penna, Snaggle Two Tactical. We're actually going to talk to him coming up in just a couple of minutes, and it relates to what Bob was talking about with his with his Recon One. So, do you want to kind of give us a little more info about that, Bob, or you want to make us wait? Well, no, no, no. We can we can introduce it here. He has come out with uh, Rob Penna has come out with another uh, mod for the Cold Steel knives this time, specifically for the Recon one. But I suspect he might be branching out from there. And it's called uh, well, I'll let him tell you what it is. But it's a it's a knife pole and uh, karambit ring that you can attach to the end of your end of your knife. And let's leave it there, and we'll talk to Rob about it. Okay. Well, if uh, if you're listening right now and you disagree with Bob on any of uh, the knives that he had and his favorite or his most liked one, or if you have any other comments about any other, other of the knives that uh, Bob kind of went over, please give us a call on the listener line and uh, let us know. We'd love to hear from you and maybe even use your clip on an upcoming podcast. 724-466-4487. That's 724-466-4487. Call the Knife Junkie listener line and uh, give us your feedback on these knives that Bob has kind of go gone over uh, first quarter of 2019 purchases and recommendations and reviews. Again, 724-466-4487. Subscribe to the Knife Junkie's YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. We're back on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 23, and we uh, teased about uh, Bob's Recon 1 and some things going on with it that's going to lead to an announcement and all that. But before we do that, just kind of tease it a little bit more. I want to let you know, stay tuned for after this announcement and the surprise interview that we're going to have. Because a little later on, I had a chance to uh, talk to Steve Thomas, president of the Shenandoah Valley Knife Collectors, about their April 5 through 7 uh, knife show up in uh, Harrisonburg, Virginia. So we're going to hear a little bit about that and how you uh, folks can attend that show. But first, Bob, I think enough teasing. I think it's time to get the cat out of the bag here. That's right. Today we have with us, again, Rob Penna of Snaggletooth Tactical. Rob, welcome to the show. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Well, I wanted to bring you back on the show because you have a brand new product that I think you just released today, but you were kind enough to give me a sneak peek of uh, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, why don't you tell me what it is? Introduce it. Well, we uh, came up with the cog ring, which is a carambit backspacer attachment for the Cold Steel Recon 1. Uh, and we actually just put up for sale yesterday. So um, it's been getting some good attention. I mean, we've been kind of teasing it for the last week or so. Jimmy Slash did a video. Um, you got one. The guys at Cold Steel got one. And uh, we're hoping we get a good response on it. Yeah, it's a... Uh 
It's a fantastic product, I have to say. Again, kind of a great follow-up to, and a logical follow-up to the Snaggletooth MF, uh, which is an automatic pocket deployer. Uh, So when you draw the knife from your pocket, the Snaggletooth MF grabs onto the side of your pocket, opens up the blade, and also offers, uh, as as a secondary benefit, a nice thumb ramp, by the way. So this new cog ring is a a karambit attachment and pull ring. So you don't have to know how to use a karambit to use it. It makes it way more convenient to to draw your recon one from your pocket. But uh, let me let me just describe it. Uh, It it fits in the place of the backspacer and uh, you fit the uh, you fit the backlock spring into it. And it extends from the back, the pommel area of the Recon 1. And it's a perfectly circular ring for you to put your forefinger or your pinky if you want to through. And it's got, uh, it's got little cutouts all around it. Uh, I'm not going to call it jimping. It, it does look like a cog, hence the term cog ring. Yeah, I just, um, when I designed it, I started playing around with different geometry. And that one kind of caught my eye. So I said, let me try that one first. Well, let me tell you, as a user, not just uh, not just as someone who loves and uses knives, but I've also done a fair bit of training with karambits uh, in the martial art I do. I really like the cog aspect of it. I love the cutouts around the outside of the ring because as you're flipping and maneuvering uh, the knife itself uh, using the ring, you can stop it kind of at any um, any time around the clock, if you will, by uh, by just pushing your thumb into one of these uh, serrations. So it really adds uh, a, a lot more um, dexterity to, to the manipulation of the knife. And something else I found, uh, which I wasn't expecting, but I, I guess is intuitive if, if you really think about it, is that in the standard grip of a, of a karambit, which is reverse grip with the knife, with the blade coming out from your, uh, the bottom of your hand, it adds distance. It, it adds a lot more, uh, it adds about an inch of uh, reach to the blade. Was this something you were uh, looking to do? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the whole purpose when I designed the part was, I see a lot of guys have lanyards, so I, I thought something rigid to be able to pull the knife out easier, especially guys who deep carry. And I really wasn't familiar with a karambit. And so I started looking around at different knives, and I saw that. And that's kind of what inspired me. It was more of a pull ring, but and then the design of the karambit just looks so nice on the Recon 1. And... I'm not experienced with that style of knives, but it does look like it adds to the technical usefulness of the knife. So, yeah, it it sure does. And and you raise an interesting point as a fixed lanyard slash pull ring for deep carry. I I noticed on some of the pictures you've posted that that knife has a deep carry pocket clip, and uh, I wonder where you got that. Actually, I've never seen it. That's my nephew's knife. He's you know he's my partner in this, and that was the knife that we originally built the snaggle tooth four was the recon one so all the pictures are of his knife and i will get you the deep carry provider that he got it from i'm not sure i think he got it on etsy oh okay the the magical equalizer of etsy (laughs) i think it's a really useful tool for yes pulling it out a lot of people myself included put a little lanyard or fob on my deep carry knives because it makes it more difficult to pull and if you're carrying a knife like a recon one which which, uh, you know, does have a bit of a, a tactical feel to it, and, and you might use it for self-defense. It is great to have an easier way to pull it from your pocket. So I'm, I'm really digging this mod, and I'm going to uh, uh, make a video of how to install it, and then also how it works, how, it, how you know, my review of it. Great. Which, uh, I'll give you a spoiler, it's pretty positive. <laughs> well, so far, we've had some uh, very good responses to the looks of it. We've sold a few over the weekend. We- be shipping them out on Monday, um, and hopefully it just keeps going because we only did a short production run. We have about forty-five that are uh, set aside for sale. The rest, you know, we kept some for ourselves, mm-hmm. sent some to you, Jimmy Slash, um, Cold Steel. So um, we're hoping that they go fast, and I, I'll make another production run and look for other platforms to design these for. No, I, th- I think that'd be a great idea. Uh, just move the holes around a little bit. Oh, I make it sound so easy, don't I? <laughs> move the holes around a little bit, change the shape, and boom, you can fit it on a bunch of other knives too. Yeah. In wrapping up, I, I this is not a hint, and I am not. Uh, I'm not trying to get you to send me some free ones to give away. I, what I want to tell you is that uh, I recently, you recently sent me five Snaggletooth MF pocket deployers. 
I put a video up and they went like hotcakes, a, a giveaway video. And uh, people loved them. They they contacted me immediately. I, I had a pretty, um, I had some pretty lax rules, basically just get in touch with me. The first people to get in touch with me who really want this thing, let me know why and and I'll get it to you. And I had five anxious people reach out to me and uh, I received a couple of emails back about you know, thanking me for the awesome product. And of course, I said, it's not my product as they know. Thanks, Nagletooth. So on your next production run, if you have a couple extras hanging around, send them our way and we'll get them out into into some anxious hands. But I know right now you got to you got to get this ball rolling first. Yeah, we got to get it rolling. Um, we probably can probably do another giveaway. I could send you one and, uh, you know, give it away. No problem. Like I said, we set a few aside for uh, marketing purposes. So uh, before we wrap up, uh, just tell people how they can buy it and uh, what where they can go online to find it. Well, it's uh, www.snaggletoothmf.com. We do have a uh, combo, so you could buy a cog ring and a deployment snaggletooth kit for 35 or the cog ring alone for 25 You could hit us up on Instagram, and there's a link on Instagram at We're Snaggletooth Tactical. And uh, follow us, follow Knife Junkie, um, and uh, hopefully we come up with some new products, some more innovative products. That sounds awesome. And, 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 and as we go out, I have to mention, I don't even know why I didn't. These two products actually work beautifully together. You get the left hand clip on there and you can draw this thing out and auto deploy it with the snaggle tooth, uh, and, and have it in, uh, in ice pick grip immediately. And, uh, I think they go hand in hand, basically. Yeah. That was the, like I said, the whole intention. I was thinking more of a pull ring. And the great thing is I made it. You know, I try to keep it low profile so when you get in your car and your sitting position doesn't really affect you. And so far, I've been driving it with, with in, you know, in my pocket and it, it really, you don't even notice it's there. So that was one concern I had. Well, I, I'd say you, uh, for especially for someone who doesn't really uh, know much about karambits, I'd say you knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on, Rob Penna of Snaggletooth Tactical. We very much appreciate talking to you and being a friend of the Knife Junkie podcast. And uh, congratulations on the rollout of your new product, the Cog Ring. Great. Thank you so much for having us. Have a question or maybe you just have a comment? Give us a call at 724-466-4487. We'll answer your question on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. That number again, 724-466-4487. We're back on the Knife Junkie podcast, and we're talking to Steve Thomas. He's president of the Shenandoah Valley Knife Collectors, and they're having their 28th annual Greater Shenandoah Valley Knife Show this coming weekend, April 5th, 6th, and 7th in Harrisonburg, Virginia, at the Rockingham County Fairgrounds. And Steve, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast, and want to give you a chance to uh, promote the show and tell everybody why they should attend. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, we are a very, very close-knit group of knife collectors throughout the area. We uh, began in 1989 and uh, have and just grown. 1991 was our first show at the Rockingham County Fairgrounds, and we have continued that to date. And it has just grown from, uh, you know, starting out at 50 tables and we're up now to over 200 tables within the space. And we have vendors from all over the country that come to this show, uh, in particular from as far as Michigan, uh, Ohio, West Virginia. Uh, we have folks from North Carolina. We have folks from Florida that come up. We have, um, one of our sister club sponsors, which is, uh, the Buck Club, National Buck Club. They have come every year, and they have a huge display of uh, all buck knives, right. and uh, it's it's just a gorgeous display to see. Yeah. What makes folks travel from so far? What makes your so show so special? Well, it's just uh, we have vendors that know each other from all around the country, and uh, have not been able to put my finger on why this particular show has been so good, right. <laughs> but. Uh, I think it just, uh, there's a, there's a unity within the show that, that, uh, you don't see it. We have a lot of fun. We, we just, uh, I don't know what is, there's, it's just different than most of the shows that you yeah, would normally yeah. go to. Yeah. Something, something special there in, uh, in Shenandoah Valley. 
It really is. It really is. There's a good, there's a good group of people and, uh, everybody, um, the, the knife makers that come in are extremely talented and, uh, you just see, you see makings of knives that are not, that are just personal and not just, um, you know, not just making it for the money end of it, but they really truly have their heart in what they're doing. So I think that's what really turns the corner on it. Well, that kind of attitude really shows through, too. Give us some of the details, uh, hours, cost, location, everything anybody needs to know to put it on their calendar. We begin on Friday. We begin at 2, 2 p.m. Uh, that allows us time for setup on early Friday morning, the 5th. And then we, we run till 7 o'clock Friday evening. We begin again on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And we run till 4 a.m. And then on Saturday night, we have a, with all the vendors within the club, we have a, a dinner that we sponsor and we have a lot of uh, awards and trophies that are given away for special knives that are displayed at the show. We have categories of custom made knives, factory knives, factory displays. Uh, we have a youth display, best in show. Uh, and these awards are given on Saturday night. We also have a silent auction. We're a um, charitable organization, so we, we give back our monies to the community. And uh, there's plenty of food. That's important. <laughs> have, uh, <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we try to take care of the public as they come to the door, make sure they enjoy their, their time at the show. Right. And I, you might you might have mentioned, I don't know if I heard it, is, is there a cost to the event? Yes, I'm sorry. There, it's uh, $5 to okay. go to the door. And uh, when you come through that door and you see vendors from all over the eastern coast, um, you'll see just some talent that is not something you would ever see every day. Right. Um, that there's just art behind some of the stuff you see at this show. Uh, it's very, uh, it's it's interesting. Yeah. Not only to not only to the guys, but um, for women as well. We've had a huge increase in our interest with women. And uh, our club, uh, we have about 130 to 140 members. Wow. We meet once a month at the uh, Isaac Walton League. Um, it's a barn that's in the Harrisonburg area. And uh, we, uh, we have special events during our meetings. Our show is our number one moneymaker for our charitable giving. So we go all out yeah. to make it happen. That's awesome. That's um, where can folks learn more? Is there a website they can go to that has all this information? Sure. You can go to the, um, to svkc.org and, uh, open that website up and you can, you can see everything you want to know about the show there. Get all the details there. All right. Steve Thomas, president, Shenandoah Valley Knife Collectors Club. Again, the 28th annual Greater Shenandoah Valley Knife Show is April 5, 6, and 7. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A lot of great events. Uh, how many tables did you say? More than 200 tables? Yeah, we have, we have 96 vendors, and we have around 210 tables. So Wow. It's a, it's a really good show. Yeah, a lot there for everybody. So, Steve, thanks for being on the Knife Junkie podcast. And if you happen to be anywhere around the Harrisonburg, Virginia area listeners, you'll want to check out the 28th Annual Greater Shenandoah Valley Knife Show. Thank you so much. The Knife Junkie is online at thenifejunkie.com. Jim, that interview got me so pumped to start going to some knife shows. Mm. I've only ever been to the uh, New York Custom Knife Show, and that is great, but we have a lot of knife shows all over the country, and what a great excuse to do some travel. But but really, you know, we, we are going to start going to some of these knife shows, and when you see us there, come talk to us. Absolutely. If you're a knife maker, a fan, a knife junkie, what have you, we want to hear from you. Yeah, well, and I have, you know, kind of teaser. We've got uh, an interview coming up uh, with uh, Bill Goodman of uh, Good Knives LLC. He's the promoter of the uh, Lehigh Valley Knife Show. That's going to be in early May. Also working on uh, getting some interviews, if possible, to kind of do some promotion. But, you know, the uh, the spring season is a big time for knife shows. The uh, uh, 44th uh, annual Oregon Knife Show is April uh, 13th. We've also got the 37th uh, NCCA Extravaganza. That's 
at the end of April. Mentioned the Lehigh Valley Knife Show, May 4 and 5, so a lot of shows coming up. Again, yeah, like you said, we'd love to get out there, talk to folks, and give you an excuse, and me an excuse, uh, maybe to to buy some additional knives as well. Yeah, yeah. uh, uh, The excuses I don't really need, but uh, (laughs) I'll take them where I can get them. They work with my wife anyway. Yeah. Well, and speaking of purchases, uh, this uh, kind of show was a recap of quarter one, kind of a review of some of the knives that uh, made its way into Bomb's collection and uh, kind of a chance to talk about some of them. Again, the Cold Steel, we had three of them, the Recon 1, the 8010, the 8015, the GEC number 21 Bull Buster, the Best Tech Kendo, the Columbia River Knife and Tool LLC. We've got the Tops Knives, uh, Rapid Strike, the uh, Mass Drop Gavco Thresher, and then Bob also uh, didn't buy one, but he's got a loaner he's trying to keep, uh, the Bastinelli Knives Red Folder that we kind of talked about. And if uh, any of you have any of those knives, has any thoughts about them, any comments on them, please call our listener line. 724-466-4487. Let us know what you think about those knives or any other knife. 724-466-4487. And Bob, as usual, I'll turn it over to you for the the final word from the Knife Junkie. Well, I'd say uh, if you're curious... Check out these uh, snaggle teeth, uh, snaggle tooth products. They really enhance, uh, can really en- enhance your your tactical knife experience, or just your uh, drawing a cold steel from your from your pocket. They're mm-hmm. they're very well engineered and very well uh, made. Well, Rob Penna, truly a friend of the Knife Junkie podcast, and this show is uh, coming out on March thirty first. And as Rob said, they just dropped their product yesterday, so. Timely guest, timely news right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. That's right. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.